Good morning, everyone. Hopefully, you can all hear us. If you can't, uh, let us know in the chat. Welcome to our 10 minute webinar. Uh, we are back to do talk about MSTP today, and we do not have a lot of time, so we are going to jump right into it. So, uh, for those of you who don't know, I'm Monica McMahon, uh, and I have Ryan Houston here with me today. So, uh, Ryan, can you tell us what is bad uh, MSTP wiring? Well, most of your MSTP networks always have a certain level of issues. Uh, very rarely do you install one without a couple issues. They're, it's possible, I've seen it, but it's rare. Typically what you have is a physical wiring problem, either bad wiring or bad terminations, things like that. Possibly you have a device issue, an actual controller issue, but that's rare. Uh, you also have bad configurations for MSTP settings, but Typically, what you're focusing on is uh, wiring problems. Okay, so it's a physical problem. More often than not, yes. Okay, great. And uh, so either of those are causing the tokens to not be able to pass, and that's causing some kinds of problems in your network. Oh, yes, for sure. Perfect. So how does that happen? How do we end up with in that situation? Oh, well, there's a lot of ways. Uh, because we're only doing a short webinar here, we're only going to go through some of the top issues. Uh, I could go on and on. This could be an hour or a full day training, but we're not going to get into that. So, Nobody wants to stare at us for a full day. <laughs> uh, so one of the, the best ways or the, the worst ways this happens is simply bad wiring, right? The electrician just threw the network in, wasn't paying attention, and then the tech is responsible for coming along and bringing the network up. Uh, it's either a standard electrician or it could be a subcontractor. Usually they don't always understand the network or understand the criticalities of it. And as a result, some small little problems happen and you have to go in and fix this thing. Not fun. What are some other things? Oh, uh, flipping polarity. That's a, a pretty bad one. So when you go from MSTP device to the next device, the wires inadvertently get flipped. Uh, even worse, if you extend your wires through a junction box and maybe the color of the wire changes and you're not sure which is which. So it's, it's not hard to do. Uh, it does happen and it's sometimes very hard to find. Yeah, especially if the wires change in color. <laughs> it's, it's a recommended practice not to do that, but it does happen. <laughs> Loose wiring is very common, uh, either grounding or shorting. So you have a little strand or the wire is just loose. These are easy to identify by touching it at the device. Normally, uh, the second you touch it, it will fall out of the terminal. These can either ground on any metal that's around the device or actually touch the opposite terminal, which obviously doesn't, <laughs> it's not good. It'll short out your connection and then create some problems. This. Uh, in a lot of ways, the loose wiring is uh, a result of a bad terminal design or uh, loose terminals. And these happens over time. Either the connector itself is bad, bad design, like it's designed to push the wire out instead of bringing it in closer, or it's just vibration and it slowly backs itself off. So this, this could be a problem that manifests over time, not always uh, right away during installation. Mm. So you, when you're having problems, go back and check. Problems can happen at any time. And the connectors are also a, another common source of the problem. They usually, because these are low cost devices, they don't use the, the manufacturers don't always specify the top level or the, the top, top notch products for the connectors. So they use low cost connectors. Uh, they don't always accept more than one wire and there's a host of problems that comes along with that. Now, you can't really change this, but you can use a couple of things to fix it. We'll get into that in a little bit later. Okay. Your wire preparation is absolutely key for this. Uh, you want it nice and twisted. You want to make sure that you don't have any loose strands. Uh, you want to make sure that your insulation is stripped back far enough so you can actually put it under the terminal and it makes connections. All of these type of things have a uh, they, they don't seem as critical as they are, but any one of these that you miss, it will mess up your MSTP network. So just to be clear, we don't want it to look like this picture. No, this probably isn't going to get you too far. All right. 
Uh, one of the last things that, that we could talk about here is the software side of it, right? So, say you fixed all your terminations and you fixed all your wiring, but what about the actual configuration itself? Uh, maybe you have duplicate device IDs, right, as an accident, or uh, duplicate MAC addresses, or maybe your MAC master is set too high and the device just takes too long. These are all problems where if you can't bring a certain device up on your network, I start looking at this, and if your device performance or your MSTP chain performance is not what you expect, then you can start looking in, in this demo area. So this is the one area where it might not be a physical problem. That's correct. Okay. So um, what do you do about it? There's a few things you can do about it. Uh, some are more painful than others. But the, the biggest thing is you've got to find it. Figure out where it is. Figure out where your problem is. Normally, uh, field complaints on an up and running system or an occupied building are the easiest source. Someone's going to say they're cold. Well, of course, they're cold because the box isn't online and they're not getting the data. Also, controllers will go online and offline, especially in your, during your commissioning period. And it's just random and you can't really quite figure it out. It's uh, extremely annoying. It seems like the device is offline, but when you click on it in your server, it disappears from you. These are fairly common problems. Also, inconsistency. The network's up, the network's down. Uh, you're getting some data exchange, you're getting none, you're getting uh, slow responses. These are all usually signs of a bad, bad MSTP wiring. That seems like the most common one. It's not usually this specific device is going on and offline. It's something's going crazy and I don't know what. And let's hope it's not more than one device because yeah. it's going to be even harder to deal with. Uh, you can always get out your trusty oscilloscope and connect it and look at it that way. Because everyone uh, has one of those in their back pocket. <laughs> yeah. I carry one in my truck, but this is uh, that's a little bit more advanced level of troubleshooting, and you've got to understand a little bit more of how the, the ins and outs of the protocol works to, to go to that level. But it is an option. Okay. So how do I figure out exactly which, um, which device is having a problem? So great, I know that there's some, some bad wiring, but which device on my network has the bad wiring? One of the easiest ways is to start splitting your network, right? Plug in, bring your service laptop, plug into the network, just cut this thing in half, and let's go take a look. Test one side, test the other. Did the problem go away, yes or no? And then keep working your way down. That obviously is very time consuming, it's very intensive, it's very intrusive. Uh, all these devices are normally in the ceiling. If it's an occupied space where you're sitting on top of desks and people and so on and so forth. But it's more of a brute force method, but it's, it will lead you to the problem. And it's less time, inten uh, time intensive than going to every single device. That's so it does correct. Speed up a little bit. Yeah, that's correct. Okay, what's the other option? Oh. The other option is uh, using Visual Backnet. We actually have a series of three checks that we can use to identify the problem device. And we look at the actual token and the passing to figure out if it's going cleanly or look at the round trip time to make sure that it's the same every single time. Uh, Monica can borrow. We'll yeah. dive into the checks. Yeah, so um, we won't go into too much detail on this, but if you are able to pull like a PCAP file, use Wireshark, use our tools to uh, look at the actual token passing on the network, you can figure out exactly which device uh, all of the problems are centering around. And then rather than opening all of the ceiling tiles, you can just open that one and start pulling on wires and checking configuration. So that's a good way to identify the device. So now that we've identified where the problem is, either through visual backnet or through slicing the network into pieces, what do I do? Well, once you figure out where you have to go and whose room you have to interrupt, uh, fix the terminations. Check the terminations and fix them if they're a problem. But at least you've identified it, so that should be fairly quick. If you've done all this, then you have to start looking at your actual software configurations. Okay. And those are kind of the, the ways that you go about doing this. Is, uh, Definitely watch your terminations. That's probably where your issue is going to be. Okay. I think we did it. We're at 10 minutes. Um, one thing that we wanted to mention, I think there's a few questions here, uh, but and feel free to add more questions. We'll definitely stick around and answer those. Um, but we do right now, we have developed a, um, a Raspberry Pi that can sit on an MSTP network 
and do the capturing for you, put the information into Visual BACnet and help you analyze that network. So if you want to be a part of our early adopters program, we do not sell this um, publicly right now, but we are offering it just to you guys on the webinar today um, to get uh, your Raspberry Pi at 50% off to be some of the first people to put this on your networks. Um, I will send out a link after the webinar, uh, and you can also fill in our survey, say that you're interested, and we can help you be monitoring your uh, MSTP networks on a regular basis rather than ripping ceiling tiles out when something goes wrong. And don't forget in these networks, it's not just during construction and installation phase. This can happen at any stage during, the, during your building's life. So it's always good to watch these chains and make sure that the uh, your networks are running solidly. Yeah, such as vibrations and different things like that, the, the wires can change. So we have a couple questions. Um, first question for you, Ryan, is Max, can you talk to Max Masters? Um, what are the configurations that you would change with a Max Master and how would that help? Network. Uh, the Max Masters one, you've got to be a little bit careful here, but typically the Max Master is set to the highest number, usually at 127. But if you have 10 devices on your network, then it's going to look for 127 devices, mm -hmm. right? So that's going to change your round trip time and make it slower. You can reduce that number and change it to say 15 or 11 or 10. However, keep in mind that when you bring it too low and you grow your network, you have to remember that, otherwise those devices won't come along. Great. Um, can you talk MSTP network numbers? Are IP networks most often number zero or one? On IP, say again? Uh, are, can you talk MSTP network numbers? Are IP networks most often number zero or one? As the device instance? Uh, whoever asked the question, please let us know, because I'm not sure. <laughs> we'll have to come back to you on that question. Yeah. Uh, all right, I don't have any other questions. If you have any questions, let us know. Otherwise, uh, Ryan and I are always here to help you answer your MSTP questions, troubleshoot your networks. Uh, feel free to reach out and we can continue to answer questions. And Ryan, I can't believe we actually fit that into 10 minutes. I'm sure we missed a lot of information, but there's a, hopefully this helps you troubleshoot your MSTP networks. Yeah. All right. Good luck out there. Thanks so much. Enjoy the rest of your day.